everyone. Religious Fanboy here again. And two weeks ago, we reviewed the live-action Aquaman film. And today we are doing a review of Justice League Throne of Atlantis, the, the animated film. I've not read the whole series, the whole comic book event. But what I've read, I've also recommend that it's... This is... A, a pretty good movie. I am... Um, a really good movie. I recommend it. And... Um, in I enjoy the uh, they made um in, in in this film I really like the the design aesthetics for for main characters um. Specifically, Aquaman and like his suit in the film. I I like how how I like how the um I like guess costume looks very good from a design standpoint in the film. Like the um. The subdued and like these saturated greens and blacks, like the black tights and and the subdued green, the desaturated green on slash gold color that makes up the um the gaunt the arm gauntlet. I think. Um, do a good job of making the orange, the orange top half of the suit come across as a good area of emphasis. And I like how realistic the animation is when they're underwater. Um, with, um, Like how it's not too busy. The communication, the times when they're talking to each other. But like it's moving in a way that you can, that it so feels like they're underwater. Like you, there's no like unrealistic stillness when they're talking. Which does kind of like for artistic precision and and credibility like that that was a good idea and much appreciated and respected because I just like that they took the time to do that. Um. And I like I liked how how this this story worked as a good introduction to Aquaman. Um and we see how Aquaman doesn't necessarily want to be he wants to save people and wants to get to know where he comes from. Like he wants to know the Atlanteans. And like he would like to help in the conflict, but also he at the same time, like a lot of the stuff is very like a lot of the stuff goes like the Atlantean stuff and him supposed to be 
like him being asked to be king of Atlantis is sprung on him in a short amount of time. But it's cool seeing him like stand up to the task, not because of him thinking he's prepared or ready to, but just because that's what he feels is need to be done for the say for the betterment of both the Atlanteans and Earth and like the humans. And I liked how they they didn't give too much focus on it, but I like that they gave um cyborg some like his own little bit of development in in how he he like fears losing his humanity and, and kind of being finding this middle ground between being okay with upgrades but also like still making sure to have his humanity and I thought it was really powerful the dream sequence of him having a normal body and running with someone and having fun and then just kind of like stopping him right right in his tracks is like the the robotic parts of him just standing there and I thought that was really neat and interesting and I like how the Justice League kind of learned the importance of their group I just thought that was really cool and interesting. And kind of for the same reason I enjoyed Ash, I, I thought um, Dragon Ball Super Broly were better, was better than a lot of the original Dragon Ball. Ball Broly films was because I like how they saved like in Justice League Throne of Atlantis there was a little bit of fighting throughout but up until like what it felt like last About last twenty minutes until um I till the third act it didn't really go full speed. Like we saw action and and the plot developing with orm scenes and and the Justice League and in Aquaman scenes, we see the bad guy and the good guy not not developing through interacting with each other throughout the film. I as the film goes on, they hear about each other like they know each other exists. But I like how the film, the action of the film, doesn't. I doesn't really start to speed up consistently until about third act, and that's when when Aquaman finally gets to Atlantis and when he first faces Orm. 
and I thought that was done really well and handled well because we got all the characters established and we we understood the reason why both side like the motives for both sides as we saw the characters develop. Which led to an interesting and and the con third act that was also had a fight and sequences that were easy for us to in, get invested in. Well, easy for me to get invested in, and I highly recommend it. I like. I like the contrast between Aquaman's humility and his uncertainty, but a lot and how that kind of mesh goes along with, but also I like how how he kind does self-sacrifice in how even though he's scared and un uncertain of his capability to to be what what Atlantis and the Earth need He's still willing to try, and I thought that was really interesting. Whereas, like, I'm very new to this, but I'm gonna try my best to be, try my best to do the right thing, even though I'm very new at what I'm, what I'm expected to do. So, I thought that was really cool. Um, and I'm, and a lot of the stuff I liked in Aquaman, I I liked in Throne of the, in Justice League Throne of the Atlantis. The main conflicts are, are kind of similar share similarities. But it, I still like there's still different things to enjoy about both of them. Um and now I'm gonna read I'm going to start by reading I'm going to read My, the first passage I'm going to read is I'm going to first read Matthew Well, I'm going to read Matthew chapter 7 and we'll discuss that. And then I Yeah, I think I'll read part of Romans chapter 2 and part of James chapter 3, I think. Um, I don't know if I'll be switching off or just moving, changing pages. But if I do switch off between Bibles, they'll 
both that I'll be using are New King James. So, yeah. So, um, feel free to pause the video and grab your Bibles if you want to read along and open to Matthew chapter 7, and I will start reading. Judge not that you will not be... Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye but do not consider the plank in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your peril your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who if his son asks for bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them for this is the law of for this is the law and the prophets oh i have something in my eye okay we're on verse 13 Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by the fruits, by their fruits, you will know them. Now, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my 
Father in heaven, many will say to me in the day in that day, Lord Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was found on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it felt, and it fell, and great was it, was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as, as the scribes. I, I am... I like this passage. It is. It reminds me of well, well. I like the whole Bible. Um, this passage reminds me a lot of. I think it's James chapter four. Well, a lot of James, specific, especially in the last couple chapters of James, as well as. A passage that I've read a couple times on this channel, um, Revelations chapter 2, the first seven verses of Revelations chapter 2. Um, and how this goes along with the, the film we're reviewing today. Orm, or Ocean Master, um, he was very full of himself, and his agenda and desire to to dis to destroy humans and go to war with them and get the Atlanteans to agree to that they should go to war. He did very underhanded things in order to do so. But his words he used, he used his words to justify these, these wicked actions he took as a way of trying to manipulate people in deciding with him. Some of these actions was he he had Black Manta disguise his ship to look like a submarine and, and attack innocent Atlanteans for the sake of being able to say that that it was that it was humans that it was a humans it was one of the human subs that killed so many of them when it was really 
people that were working for under Ocean Master. And as a final attempt to get the Atlanteans to be willing to go to war, go to war with the humans, he he killed his mother. Ocean Master killed his mother, the queen of Atlantis at the time, and framed the Earthlings for it. And and we see how how Orm and his relation to Aquaman is he is jealous of 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 Arthur Aquaman for the birthright and how how. much is like how much faith and he she has in Arthur to be the the ruler that the Atlanteans need and we see that that ocean master is very he uses his status that he was kind of born into. Yes, he has power and and is clever and has traits that could be used for good purposes. But he those his potential becomes corrupted because of how far he takes things to get what he wants done. For not for what is better for everyone else, but simply because uh, out of out of his anger and rage against the earth, the land dwellers or earthlings, and Aquaman. Even though he's he's very new to the idea of being an Atlantean, and as well as being a hero, let alone being a king, he's. He does what he does. Like he even joins the like he he decides to become king not because he feels like he's equipped or worthy of it, but just because he's been told that's what the Atlanteans feel like they he. He's been told and feels like the world needs someone that can that can truly and maintain the peace between the humans and the Atlanteans. And part of the reason why Aquaman agreed to join the Justice League is for the sake of helping establish a good, healthy relationship between the humans and the Atlanteans. Um, and I really enjoyed Rewatching Justice League Throne of Atlantis. And I've enjoyed these past. A lot of these most recent miniature reviews I've been doing. Um, 
and I'm grateful for God for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to read just a small excerpt from, I think I'll read a small excerpt from Romans chapter 2. And then I think I will call it in and I'll discuss it. And then I think we'll... Um, there's this I'm going to read a passage of chapter 3 and a passage of num of chapter 2 um, real quickly and discuss these um, first passage I will read is Romans chapter 2 verses 25 through 29 for circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law but if you are a breaker of the law your circumcision has become uncircumcision Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And will not the physical, physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you who even with your written code and circumcision, are a transgressor of the law. For, for he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcised, nor is circum, nor is circumcision that which is outward in flesh, in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of, of the heart and the spirit, not in the letter, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. Um, like this talks about. This kind of doves into a lot of the cultural con has a lot of cultural context to the Israelites in the Old Testament in the times of the Old Testament versus what what it looked like to be a follower of God after after what Jesus did on the cross. Um, I circumcision was a physical thing that would be done to babies, and this was at this time, like at that time, Jews before the new, the old covenant, the Davidic covenant was fulfilled. Like the old covenant, the original covenant was fulfilled, and the new one began through what Jesus, through Jesus' life, and and his death and resurrection. Um, there were a lot of laws that were considered ceremonial, and a lot of traditions that God's chosen people were expected to do, in in a way in ways to, as atonement for sins, and also to set themselves apart from the surrounding people. One of these things was circumcision, which at that time, since no one, none of the other 
people did circumcision and stuff, that was supposed to be a sign that, oh, they were a god, they were one of God's chosen people, and, and at that time they, that was almost specific, they were specifically Jews, and Israelites were considered God chosen, God chosen people. And then after what Jesus did on the cross, the invitation to have that relationship with God was opened up to everyone who who chose and who believed that Jesus is the son of the living God and and that he died in for all of our sins so that we could be forgiven and if we that we accept him as our Lord and Savior. Um, so, and like with Orm, like he uses status and like his, what he viewed as his birthright, which in his eyes was to be king of Atlantis, to he used his ego and his sense of status to justify his heinous actions. Even though it could have been considered his birthright to be king since he was the son of the king, he would have not have been a good king because of of his actions and his selfishness that we see. Like he put he put his personal agendas and his hatred over like that doesn't mean like all leaders all earthly leaders are perfect. In, in the Bible, it says the job of government is to dispel evil. But, I, I kind of, it's getting really long, but I'd like to kind of compare Ocean Master to the kings of Israel. Like, um, with Saul, he didn't see a problem with what he did, his his sinful actions, because the Israelites liked him, and he was like, oh, I can't be doing anything wrong, because wouldn't they dislike me if I was doing wrong? And in the contrast, we, we have the next king of Israel and Judah, was David, and even though he he had his more than his fair share of sins, like he had his own fair share of sins that he had committed. When when he was eventually called out and listened to what him being held accountable for his sins and made aware of what he had done, he was truly repentant. And, and to this day, he is considered, and in scripture, David is considered to be a man after God's own heart. This, despite his sin, because he was repentant and Truly sorry for what had done, what he had done, and he was forgiven for that. Same with, well, actually, um, this is pre-recorded, but in one of the last summer Genesis videos, we talked about the story of of Jacob and Esau and. And Jacob's life and his sins and and 
Jacob, even though it took him some time, he confronted his brother. He he asked for forgiveness and was forgiven. And God went on to use Jacob to expand the kingdom of God's God's kingdom and and Israel. And in the Old Testament, where I, we see that 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 Jacob, even after what he did, he is he got his name changed to Israel and by God, and he was highly honored and respected. To same ability of to same or similar status to people like David and and Abraham. And so main lesson is God loves us on like main takeaway from this video is no matter what sins we have committed, God loves us deeply, and He won. Even though our sin separates us from the original sin was what, and our sin is what separates us from, what separated us from having a relationship with God. God, God loves us so much and wanted so badly for us to have to have a relationship with him that he through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross he provided a way back so that if we believed in that we could that we could have eternal life with Jesus and and God didn't have that relationship once again with him. And with that being said, may God be with you and see you next time. Bye.